Hello, hello. Hello, Christina, Lori. Look at everyone popping in. This is fun. Hello, everybody. We are going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to our first ever episode of Tastemaker Talk, where you get to chat with your food creator business besties. So a little bit about this, this will be a live, a bi-weekly live podcast type of webinar where we touch on real talk topics that provide community, education, connection, a little bit of commiseration too, because, you know, sometimes we just need to complain and let our feelings out, but overall with the goal of helping you achieve your creator business goals. And I am your host, Abby Rodriguez. I'm the CEO and founder of Tastemaker Conference, and this is Chandis, my business partner. And I'll let her introduce herself as well. I'm Chandice, uh, COO and uh, sponsorship director, as well as Abby's business partner. Um, and, you know, business bestie. We have so much fun together. We we are here for Tastemaker Conference, um, which is the premier food creator conference and community. And we're so excited to be back doing this. We had a podcast a long time ago, and we're excited to kind of revive that portion of of our community. It'll be really fun. So we're going to start each episode off with a sponsor highlight. As you know, our sponsors mean so much to us. So we're going to start with a shout out to one of our returning sponsors, ThermoWorks. They were there from year one in Salt Lake City. Um, that was our very first year. And I think it was seven years ago. They are yes. a high quality cooking, baking, and barbecuing um, company with different products, including their industry leading Thermo Pen One and their Square Dot, which we gave away for free at Tastemaker Conference in Chicago. Um, if you did not claim your free Square Dot, they are still offering that product to our Tastemaker attendees for free. So all you have to do is email Andrea at thermoworks.com and she'll get you set up and get you everything you need. So thank you, Thermoworks. We're so excited that you're sponsoring this episode and glad all of you are here. Another segment that we are introducing on this live webinar slash potential soon to be podcast is a, a feature called wild comments. So think of Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweets, but it's more or less for food creators. So these are highlighting like your funny, crazy, like what WTF moments um, that we get right on, on our recipes and just overall across the board on social media. So you can always submit them here in the collaborative and we will highlight one uh, whenever we have a Tastemaker Talk episode. And this one, today's wild comment comes from Samantha on a reel. We had posted a satire reel about this from East Pine Home. And she wrote, I had someone sub cocoa powder for coffee. Why? So I think like those are just things where you're like, why? But it's not coffee at that point. It's hot chocolate <laughs> it's like okay okay whatever you, whatever you need to do but we would love to feature your wild comments on our next episode and so there is a question box to submit them in the collaborative but we also have a form as well and you could also drop them in the comments too since we are doing this live together it's funny because I'm reading while well, listening to a book by Ruth Reichel she's a huge food writer she's done a ton of books and they were it's a you know, a fiction, but she's joking about this magazine where they had a, they had, you know, if your recipe doesn't turn out, we'll pay you for your ingredients. And so they would get the craziest comments. And this one little old lady, she was like 80 and she would always, always call and be like, I subbed out, this ice cream was terrible. And the girl's like, okay, what did you do wrong? Cause we have to walk you through it first to make sure you did it right. She goes, well, I, she said, did you use cream? Well, I changed that out for skim milk because that's what I use. And she's like, okay, did you use cocoa? And she goes, well, no, I used instant hot chocolate instead. And she just went, on, the ingredients were yeah. in So it was really funny because this little old lady, they got, the magazine got to where they would love her calls because they couldn't even believe the things that she would sub out. <laughs> so. She's like, so I replaced the entire recipe, but... Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly. Could you, and could you imagine if, if food bloggers gave that sort of offer, we will replace all or pay you for your recipe. That would be insane. For the ingredients. That's funny. Yeah, it was really. Mm -hmm. 
this cute little at first you're like she's so annoying and then you're like oh I can't even believe that she was subbing that out for that so yeah she never made anything with the right ingredients which I feel like happens in the blogging community often where people are like I subbed this 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 and this out and it didn't work like oh well she you know what would be a great like food website would be like if we created one that was just all of the recipes that people have subbed out and recreated and be like hey here's the recreations yeah well even that would be funny I recreate them right Mm -hmm. (laughs) even more terrible (laughs) let let them do it so yeah so we're excited to see all the comments that come in um from you guys with your wild comments because we know they're out there. So mm. another another thing we wanted to share with you is new food news. And so I I have, fi- have found this stuff and Abby doesn't know any of this. So I'm excited Don't to miss her, her real life reaction to our new food news. So new food news, new food news. I don't know. We'll have to have some jingle or something. Um, so the first one is Velveeta is dropping its first ever jarred queso. So they've always done the brick. They've always done the block. And now they're going into jarred queso. Wait, I thought they already had jarred queso. (laughs) They do not. That is mind blowing. Okay. Is that one of those? Like like you thought the Shazam was Shaq, remember? Yes, I was just going to say that. The, uh, oh gosh, what is that effect called? It's some sort of theory. What is it? The Berenstain Bears. Yeah, what's the- one of those things too. Theory dash. Oh, the Mandela effect. The yes. Mandela effect. Mandela effect, where all of us thought we watched. Who saw also Kaza- or Shaz- Kazam, and it was a genie movie, and it was Sinbad. It's Shaq. But it was Sinbad, but everyone's like, no, no, it was actually, actually Shaq. But we were like, no, it was Sinbad. I saw Sinbad in that movie. And Sinbad came uh-huh. out and was like, no, I didn't. And this has happened with a lot of things. Like people have had this happen a lot. And now it's happening with Velveeta's canned case or jarred queso, which I already thought they had one. Well, me. that's exciting. <laughs> so there's that. Oreo is getting a sour punch with a new candy infused flavor. And so it's sour punch Oreos. Golden Oreos I with punch in between. I don't think I like that. Do you like that? I don't like I don't like that because to me I'm like I barely like the golden Oreos as they are because I ended up I only get the gluten free and they really were a letdown. The the other Oreos they nailed it with gluten free, but the golden I'd been waiting for so long and even Josh was like they're not buttery like the real ones. I'm all <laughs> so so <laughs> add a sour punch to that. No, I'm good. Okay, okay. What if we take the Oreos and dip them in the Velveeta? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like a fries and frosty situation okay well it could be we just made it one it could be that would be a good april fool's one um okay so fan favorite cookie chain crumble is now offering mini versions of their treats so they've always had their big cookie crumble cookies that everyone knows and now they're offering a mini version which i think this is cute i like this i like everything tiny or giant so do you remember that, that is show? exciting the big orange couch or something big blue bear couch Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. they sat on a giant couch so I like things really oversized large like one of the greatest presents I ever got as a kid I still remember it was a giant box of animal crackers and it looked just like the animal crackers circus box and it had the string and it was huge and you opened it up and there was two giant bags of animal cookies and of course that was one of my favorite gifts ever (laughs) because it was my favorite treat back in the day so I either like something really big or really tiny. So the tiny crumble cookies are, I would vote for those. They'll be so cute. Are they they gluten-free though? No, they don't even have a gluten-free crumble cookie for us yet. Oh yeah, we both have celiac disease. So that's next on the new food news that we'll be looking forward to. Yes. Okay. So our last, last things really quick. Jell-O is dropping two new pudding flavors for the first time in five years. And it is churro delicioso and mango saboroso. So I feel like they're kind of going with like a Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> I know it's not Cinco de Mayo anymore, but I feel like those flavors are kind of to that audience. Mm-hmm. So is this like a jello flavor or like jello pudding? Pudding. Yeah. Not like pudding. Okay. Gelatin, but pudding. Can I say churro, churro jello. Yeah. That, no, oh. that's a hard pass for me personally. Yeah, no, they're pudding, but it's the first time they've dropped flavors in five years. So that'll be exciting. 
And then last two, Starbucks has added boba to its menu with brand new summer drinks. And people are excited about the flavored pearls. I think boba is having a moment as we, I mean, there's boba places everywhere. We just had boba when I was visiting you in Virginia. And I either like it or you don't because you suck, suck them up and it's like, you know, or oh, you I you love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's 50-50 though in the community of like liking it or not. What do you think? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a mouthfeel texture thing, I think for most wow. people. Especially because they're big. Mm-hmm. And then last yeah. one, last new food news is McDonald's said they are offering a beefy burger soon. Like they're, they're wanting to offer a more like intense, um, filling burger so they're calling a beefy bur- beefier burger but I don't exactly they they declined to give any more comment that was it that was all they gave mm, I have some pushback on that I feel like they that they're just reintroducing the same food they have on their menu just with a new name just a thicker patty I don't know I am a fan of a good smash burger like a really thin patty that's nice and crisp on the outside yes that's our favorite too that's the best yes so I don't know but anyways those are our new food news so we'd love to hear which one's most exciting to you the new pudding flavors the boba boba being added to Starbucks drinks a beefier burger at McDonald's uh Oreo sour punch flavor and Velveeta jarred queso that actually has not already existed (laughs) well and Lori said black yeah. To, I'm assuming she meant she was talking about boba, the tapioca, right? It's like, so I guess you're right, Chandice. You either you love it or you hate it. I love it. Yeah. I, I love that. All the new food news. Oh, look, there she is going, bleh, bleh, boba. <laughs> yeah. It, it's definitely a texture thing for a lot of people, especially the big boba pearls. I like the tapioca, but one time I got the big black, like boba in mine. I did not, it was like harder and it did not, I didn't like the texture of that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a love hate thing. Well, this is fun. I I'm looking forward to hearing all the new food news because (laughs) Chandice told me she's never going to tell any of us until we're alive of what it's going to be. And Chandice is the queen of food. These are things you're going to learn. You're going to learn a lot about Chandice and myself over the course of, you know, the next year as we show up bi-weekly um, but she is the person like if you ever need recommendations for any any restaurants any products anything Chandice is like oh here and gives you like a full amazing list of everything like I've just when we do our excursions and things Chandice is fully in charge of all the food so we can thank her for her amazingness thank you I love traveling with Abby because she's just like where are we going what are we doing and I'm like this is what we're eating and this is what we're ordering and if you want to add anything else that's great but since we're both gluten-free we just share so it works out and, great yeah and I feel like that's actually the perfect segue into our discussion today that our, our episode one is all about running a business with your bestie and I think like that is one of those things where you you learn your synergies with one another around like what each other's strengths and weaknesses are. And I would definitely say Chandice is like the, the food planner. And I'm very much a go with the flow person when it comes to that type of thing where I'm like, great, I will eat wherever. I don't have a lot of preferences. Um, but yeah, I think that's a good way to start off this conversation uh, about that because we really just want to highlight, uh, you know, we've been business partners for seven years now. And that's a long, that's a long time to be in a business relationship and friendship with, with another person. And, um, you know, I think with businesses, it is a different type of partnership because you have a lot of like high stress things coming at you and a lot of strategy involved and a lot of decisions. And it's like a marriage in a lot of ways, because it's like, Oh, you know, we got our finances and we have to take care of like the emotional health of each other and, and the team, which I feel like sometimes is, is like your extended family. And so in a sense, you know, it requires a lot of those same skills, emotional intelligence and just relational skills. Um, but first, before we get into all of that, I think we should tell everyone our story of how our meet cute of how we came together, Chandice. Yes, I just sent the picture to Abby the other day. I was like, mm, 
look, it's the first time we met. What are the odds that the first time we met, we would take a picture? Like that I find interesting too. I'm like, yeah. take a picture. <laughs> but we did. And you, Abby was yeah, I guess. So pregnant. Like I, I was remember- 38 weeks, 37 or 38 weeks pregnant. Yeah. And yeah. I remember just being like a little ball of spice and like, oh, I am hot and I am tired because she had been walking the show floor at Expo West. I was there with in Aaron. California. Yeah. California. I was there with Erin from Meaningful Eats, who's our other dear, dear friend. And she goes, you need to meet my friend, Abby. And I was like, oh, and she goes, yeah, she's, she's here and you need to meet her because you two are just going to hit it off. And she introduced us and we were like, oh, well, hello. And then we just all took a picture together. And then literally, I mean, a couple, it had to be a couple weeks or months later, we were in a group on Instagram together. You remember back in the day when you have those like groups of people where the you pods. Have- yeah, where you'd comment on each other's stuff and share and do giveaways and all of that back in the day of Instagram with that. And so we were in a group together with Susie and a bunch of other amazing people. And so we got to know each other through that. And then Abby said, she called me. I was at a cabin in Heber, Utah, at a women's retreat that I was hosting called Enlightened Retreat. And um, she called and I took the call and she said, I want to do a food conference and I want you to do it with me. And I was like, I am like literally at a women's retreat <laughs> that I am coming off of now, now, now that you know what tastemaker is like when you come off of planning or you're in there, can you imagine if like someone called you while you were at <laughs> <laughs> like, Hey, I know you're, you know, but, and you didn't know. And that it was just funny. Cause I was like, I, I don't even, I don't even have any more energy or anything to give. And so I told her, and I, I said, don't even know you. I don't know. It was, it was funny because that was, that didn't even cross my mind. That wasn't even an issue. That's, true. That's not part of your personality, but still. That wasn't an issue. <laughs> it was simply just like being in it right then and having just found speakers and event and all, and all this stuff. But, um, but I remember feeling like this is going to be something, this is going to be special. I know I don't have it to give right this second. And I remember you asked me, you're like, do you think it's possible? And I said, yeah, I do. I think it's going to be hard, but I think it's going to be, it's totally possible. And then you kind of started going. And then I came on not very long after, because as we know, I'm like, I just sat with it. I'm like, I can't not do this with her. I need to do Mm -hmm. this. So then before our very first event, um, came on and, and it was so fun. It was so fun. And Leslie had done so much hard work to get everything like set up with you before then as well. Mm -hmm. She's our operations director and boy, she keeps the two of us like, which is so good um, for our personalities to have that. So we have such an amazing team, but that's our, I mean, I feel like that's my side of the meet cue. Mm -hmm. And and I remember thinking that you were a little darling little ball of spice. Yeah, because I'm just just south of five three, and how how tall are you? I'm not. You're five nine. Yeah, so I feel like that's the big thing when people see us or when we're up on stage. It's like Candice is always like, "Are you wearing your heels?" Um, but yeah, I just remember that too of seeing you and like you. I like to describe Candice as like living sunshine. I mean, I think all of you who have been at our events and have had the pleasure of meeting her get that and know that. Um, and yeah, I just remember Aaron being like, oh, you have to, yeah, you have to meet my friend Chandice. Like it's just, you two are meant to be, but in terms of timeline. So I had my, I was pregnant with my youngest Graham, who is now, he's now seven. Like he is like the timeline basically for tastemaker, which is kind of fun. But yeah, I had him at the end of March. So that was the beginning of March, uh, of 2017, and then we had our first event in Salt Lake City in 2018. And so, yeah, Leslie was there from the very beginning. And um, and Daphne, actually, she was also one of our first hires. But And then she went off and pursued her her career in, in teaching. And now she's back with us. So that's, that's fun. That, like, we have our little group, like our little tastemaker family. But, um, yeah, you came on. A few months after that, because we had started getting everything going, and I remember just trying to sell sponsorships on my own and thought I was actually going to die with the stress of trying to start this business on my own and realizing, like, this is impossible to do on your own. And I think, like, that's kind of one of the 
big things that I want to talk about today is this idea of the being a solopreneur is really empowering and and fascinating and I think proving to yourself that you have the ability to to build something on your own but I think you can only go so far and depending on what you're wanting to do like if you were at that point in your business where you're feeling stagnant or you're feeling stuck or you need some sort of support I think that's why we see a lot of people who have partners like in their life um, whether it's their spouse or their their life partner or whatever it may be you know take their blogs and take their their recipe websites and they move it to that next level and and create like these amazing empires when you join forces with somebody. And I just remember knowing that and feeling that when I met Chandice, I'm like, she's, she's all the things I'm looking for in a business partner. Um, and I just remember like when you came back to me, you were like, okay, I've been thinking about it and I'll do it. I just remember being like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so profoundly grateful because I was also obviously had a newborn. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I feel like I was like minorly in a state of psychosis. <laughs> like, like starting a new business, having new baby, all these things. And then we, and then um, my former husband and I, uh, we had then moved to the other side of the country a few months shortly after that. So it was a lot of, a lot of beginnings, um, a lot, but yeah. yeah. The birth of Tastemaker, the birth of Graham, the birth of, I feel like that was also kind of the start of the birth of like the new Abbey as well. Like this a, is true. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, and we all have that. We all have different stages. We've talked about this. One of the things I love most about our partnership and about working with someone, and I want to preface this with you maybe saying, well, I, I'm never going to have a business partner because that is just not what I'm wanting to do. That's okay. We're not meaning like go out and get a business partner. I have had the same writers for over two years. I send them Christmas gifts. I make sure they know how much I appreciate them. I'll send them a Starbucks gift card every now and then just say, thinking of you, thank you so much. Building your business besties within your own realm of those who help you. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to be a partner. It can be your writers. It can be a photographer. It could be literally your spouse or your child. My son, I now pay him to do recipes for me and recreate them. And, and he loves it. And it's really fun. He's 13. So it can be mm-hmm. anybody can be part of your business besties. Um, but one of the things I love most is that the I said that that was kind of the start of the new Abby it was absolutely a start of the new Chandis because I had done many things up until that point I had a lot of fun doing different things in my career and in my life but it's different when you find someone who meets who level level sets with you where you guys both are and both of us are pretty high and it's really difficult for a lot of people to meet that of like we're going to do this. And people are like, okay. And then we, we do it, you know, we want to do it and we can do that together. Um, but I look at the woman that I was when we started and the woman I am now, and I am so grateful for the things that, that you have taught me because I've learned so much that just genuinely, I would not have learned without you because I only have so much of that capacity and the people I'm physically around, we don't live in the same state. I live in Southern Utah near Zions and Abby lives in Virginia. And so even the people that are right here in my physical circle, we're all at different levels and I wouldn't have gained all that I have and am today without, without Abby. Ah, cool. Huh, this so, is the part where we start crying and getting emotional. Well, I mean, and that's thank you for that, by the way. That never, it never gets old hearing that. But I like what you said, Chandice, about it doesn't necessarily need to be like an official business partner. I think just knowing that you don't have to go it alone. Not that you don't have to. I don't think that it works. Like we are wired as humans for connection and to share and build things with other people and I think there's just so much fulfillment and joy and success and expansion um when you do that whether that's a family member or or a neighbor or your writers or whoever is in your corner and is your your business bestie and one of my I love that Marco Polo like I literally just sent Lori our cute friend Lori Murphy a polo yesterday or the day before and we just chatted and you know what we maybe chat a couple times a year 
but when I do, it like lifts me up and like, oh, that's what, you know what? I hadn't thought about it that way. Or, oh yeah. What do you think about this new change with Google? How are your, what are you thinking? What are you? And even if it's just that finding those friends that you meet at Tastemaker or you meet wherever and you connect a couple times a year, even because like Abby said, you're not supposed to go at it alone. And Lori and I talked about that. There are times when we kind of just hunker down and do our stuff and you just, you start to feel heavy because you're like, this is exhausting, especially when you're there and then a Google update comes and you're like, oh, come on, you know? And so if you have surround yourself with friendship, you know, and those people who have those same desires and goals as you, then it can only lift you up. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes. And I also enjoy our chats, Lori. Lori, Lori is a wonderful business bestie to have, and she's here in the webinar right now. So if you don't know her, you should definitely get to know her and have her be, be on your side. <laughs> she would call your business bestie. <laughs> she's yeah. amazing. So I would like to talk about communication mm -hmm. and setting boundaries, because I think like that, I want this to be also useful in the way of these conversations of talking about the things that I think can sometimes be difficult, especially as women in business. So I am getting my master's degree in sociology and I am deeply morally, ethically passionate about, about, you know, um, like equity in, in the workforce and in the workspace. And I know from just my research that women, we statistically struggle more than you know our male count counterparts in a like hetero cis type of setting is what I'm specifically speaking to here but just basing it off of that we struggle to speak up more for ourselves or to ask for the money that we deserve or you know a lot of those things and in, in the data and social science backs that up and I think that can sometimes translate to even our businesses when our small businesses that we're running, if it's just us and a couple of writers, or we have a small team, like we had to do here at Tastemaker, like it's Chandice and I, so we had three full-time people, Chandice, um, myself and Daphne, and then, um, and then Leslie. And then we have a few, uh, we have Amanda and Candace who are contractors, but very much part of our team. And then we have a bunch of other contractors though, like our graphic designer and our web developer and our videographers and our photographers. And I, I think that you have that even with your, your food blog or your food website, if you have your developers and your writers and, and photographers or whomever that may be. And we have to communicate a lot. And a lot of times we, we communicate mostly through email. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I think things in email the inflection and tone can sometimes come across differently, or it's just, it's one of those things that you have to learn to communicate directly and set boundaries sometimes, especially people that you're working with closely on a day-to-day -day basis. So Chandice, I'm throwing this question to you. And not that, I don't think like you and I really have conflict, but I think that we're good at navigating difficult business conversations. I thought you were um, saying, what, which we don't. With what? I thought you were going to say what? That. Boundaries, which we don't. <laughs> do so that's though that's an interesting conversation. Like I think we do. You think we don't. Like what? I, what do you mean by that then? I mean that like it, for us, it works so differently because we are best friends and business partners. And so I would call you at ten o'clock at night, and you would call me at five a.m. in the morning if we needed to. You know what I mean? True. But we wouldn't yeah. allow to do that we wouldn't allow I wouldn't have my writer do that you know what yeah. I mean and so yeah. I was just joking because I thought it was funny when you were saying we have and I was like I thought you were going to say no boundaries <laughs> our boundaries are more flexible that's right with one another right. right and I think like depending on the person and the relationship you have more like pro professional rigid boundaries which are important and appropriate but like I think we, I think we still have boundaries around things though. Like we're both, I think really good about like our time on the weekends or like if Chandice is like, I'm going on vacation or this is my week with my kids or I'm not working today. Cause like my kids are off school um, and vice versa. I feel like we're really good at honoring that. Those I think good. that's a form of the that's boundary. Boundaries. Yes, that's true. And I think that comes with mutual respect. Like that's a really mm -hmm. big, us is, 
we trust that each other will get done what needs to get done. And yeah. so there, uh, that is my, like, and we've said it, our whole team is as a leader, there's really, really, you're very good at not micromanaging and that's made our team very successful. So if you're looking for a key to take away, if as the leader, it's, it's funny that you think this is what you would, you know, you probably think this is what you'd need to do, but actually I feel like micromanaging can be very detrimental to your team and your success. So I would encourage you to avoid micromanaging as much as possible and allow people to shine in their roles. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is now where I'm like, I feel like we should bring Daphne and Leslie into the conversation. I will say this though. That is a skill that has been acquired. Like, like we were saying, we've been doing this for seven years now and understanding just how much we have both grown. Like I have learned a lot of just emotional immaturity and growth, you know, through my relationship with Chandice as, you know, personally and professionally. Um, and just a lot of that comes with self-trust. And I think right, that maturity, I think you just naturally learn. When you trust yourself, I think you're able to then trust others. It's true. More. And both of us have really adopted the abundance mentality over scarcity mentality that we understand we don't have to, you know, I mean, there, there is a, there's hard work. Absolutely. But like the grind of like, oh, I have to do this or else it, that's, it's not a fun place to be in that mindset. And so we're really good. Even when something bad happens of being like, it's going to work out, it will work out one way or the other, something else will come in, in its place or those who, you know, everything will work out. And I don't think we've talked about this. This is not toxic positivity. This is abundance mentality versus scarcity mentality, which is very important to us and our team, um, which then allows us to not micromanage as much as possible. Abby's way better at it than I am. Um, but because we trust that everything will be okay and that each person on our team is capable and willing and able to do their work. So, yeah, but I do think like that does come with setting up proper support systems. Um, like, what do you think that looks like in our business? Like, how do you, how do we scaffold like the support structure so that there is like a clear structure of everybody's roles and responsibilities, but then the freedom yeah. to go forth and go forth and prosper. Mm -hmm. Star Trek thing. I think for sure, like the SOPs, standard operating procedures, mm -hmm. is number one. Anytime you hire anybody on or you bring anyone onto your business, even if they're doing five hours of work a week, if they're your dishwasher after you've done your cook day, there should be a standard operating procedure of what is expected because you've given them that and they know it. And then there's more room for flexibility and creativity because they already know what's the expectation. I feel like that is a huge uh, base. That's our foundation, you know, is understanding mm -hmm. and having clear, um, clear values for your business. There is no question. I think most people who've been around from day one know community education experience. This is tastemaker. Community oh, it, 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 oh, it's, it's mirrored. <laughs> like, I don't know which direction to point in. It's right here. Oh, there, yes. It's on our background. Yeah. And those are, we use that in everything. It's in everything we do in our sponsorship deck, in our uh, proposals, it's in our communication on, on the website. Everything we do comes back to community education experience. And anytime we make a decision, does it fit in those three things? If not, then no, the answer is an easy no. So I would say also for your business today, if you haven't done it yet, figure out a who your, who your target avatar is, like who is the person that you are speaking to and speak to them directly instead of, hey guys, like everybody speak to, hi, I'm so glad you're here. This recipe is just for you. Um, figure out who your person, your audience is. And then, then with that, have your values for your business. And you may think, well, my value is cooking good food. And then that's great. But what else is important to you? the heritage of your Danish family or making sure that you can get minute, you know, delicious recipes on the table in under 30 minutes. What are the things at, so you can spend more time with family? What are your values? Bring those together. That'll be your scaffolding base is your, mm -hmm. and then standard operating procedures, clear boundaries. And then it just kind of goes from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I really liked um, our systems for success panel at our, our last conference in March of this year of 2024, uh, where we were talking to everybody about like what that looks like. And it's kind of a similar thing um, that they were talking about like the SOPs and, and all of those things. And a useful tidbit <clears throat> that we've actually started implementing. See, we learn things at Tastemaker Conference as well. Uh, if you are wanting to take away like a nugget of how you can apply something in your business moving forward today that you're, if you're not already doing is any time that you explain like say your recipe writer or your photographer so you're like hey this is how I want to format my posts um, just like if you're going to have a call with them just record it in a loom or sometimes I've even just gotten on these zoom calls with our team members and we just record the Zoom so that you, you're you already doing it so you don't have to go back and then recreate an SOP. Also, chat GPT or AI is really helpful in helping create SOPs if you want them then written and then having a video recording via a Loom is a super time efficient way to do that if you're already teaching and training somebody how. So just wanna pass that along because that's great. Daphne is raising her hand. She's letting us know we that we want to make sure that we have time to answer your questions oh, yes. on this first episode. So we're we are excited to be able to do that. I know that this is a very intimate group this first time, but how fun to have you here and to, to answer your specific questions about anything, running your business, our story, tastemaker. So we'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, we would love to hear them. Um you can just raise your hand or you can, I think they can unmute themselves, right? I don't know if they can. If you I think there might be a master setting that doesn't allow for that. But Lori is raising her hand. Oh, wait, I Hi. can unmute you. I unmuted you. Hi. Hi, Hi how are you? Hey, Lori. Great. I'm sorry, I have like a, there, that might be better to go that way. Um, Cause I have the light coming in from the background. So I know we've talked a little bit about this over the years, and you know I run a pretty lean ship over here at Josie and Nina. When, other than um, my back end and some SEO help um, that I'm getting on a monthly basis, when did you guys decide to invest? Because I'm contemplating um, hiring someone, like did you invest all in and take no profit? for a while and were you able to do that or did you pay yourself a little bit like how did it look for you so if it's okay Abby I'll start if that's all right yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to let everyone know Abby and I both also have food blogs so that was a good foundational base that both of us had a food blog to be able to to start here and I did a, a little deep dive with my friend Susie from Hey Girl Hey. And I asked her this question and she said, I did not take a dime for the first two or three years, not a dime. She said, everything I put, everything I made, I put back in. And she said, I was always hiring right before I probably should have, but it propelled her to that next level every time. So it's a bit of a leap of faith. But I would say, keep business and personal separate. It's very important that you keep it as an LLC and not like, I mean, you might have to, decide as a family that you're going to invest a little to get it going, of course, but try to make sure that the money that you're investing is, is from what you're making. But yeah. I, I still am putting so much into it right now, into my blog, because I want to take it to that next level. And so I would say, take, make the sacrifice if you can, if you can and reinvest to grow because every time I've done that, and that's what I took from Susie. Susie's like, you'll grow. Every time I did, it was scary. I was like, well, I could keep this extra 500 a month or I could level up and hire another writer or I could hire a photographer to help me out with some of the stuff I just can't get out. Every time it paid for itself, every time. Yeah. Yeah. And then to answer your question specifically, Lori, about like tastemaker side of things, I do want to point out too, at the time when Chandis and I started Tastemaker, like I, I am now divorced and like a single, single woman supporting myself. But at the time, like I had my former husband's income to rely on and Chandis is also, you know, married and has that. And so that like, is a huge, I think, privilege that a lot of times, like I didn't even recognize that until like I've now been singled. I'm like, oh, 
that that makes it a lot easier because you have your own security blanket. But you know, a lot there's a lot of empowered women out there that have like their own nest eggs and things like that. So I don't think that's a deterrent. It just to be transparent, that made it a lot easier to be like for the first couple of years, we like I think the first year I maybe paid myself fifteen thousand dollars between twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen. The difference is with pacemaker though is when the pandemic hit and to be completely transparent, like we we didn't pay ourselves for years after that. And we it, to to answer your question though, at that point we had to decide, are we going to assume uh like some debt to invest into tastemaker to grow it, or are we just gonna let it go and let it die? And there I just had a fire in me that I was like, I can't, we've worked too hard and this is an amazing community and it has so much potential. We're not going to just roll over and let it die. So we like did take on some debt to grow. Um, and so that was through, you know, SBA loans, things like that, that the government, you know, was, was providing at that time, especially for businesses like event-based businesses that we were the most impacted like across the board, because we literally weren't able to run our business and make our revenue how we normally do. And but we, we used, were able to we use that, that to make sure that we paid our team. Like Abby and I, yeah. he has the partners, we could take that on, but we would not ask that of our team. We made sure yeah. to, to pay them because their families were relying on that. But we decided as partners that we were willing to do that pro bono work for a few years to keep Tastemaker afloat. And so, and there's challenges every, you know, year still that happen that it's like, that's part of your business, your operational expenses though, is payroll, right? Mm -hmm. And I think as a business owner, it, that it can be a scary thing and it can be, it, it's not for the risk averse being an entrepreneur that, that I know and that I have learned because there is inherent risk involved, but to Susie's point and to Chandice's point. Like if you keep reinvesting, I think every penny you can, it will continue to grow, but you do have to be strategic about it too. And so that's where it comes down to like impact versus effort. We look a lot at that based on our decisions. Like, am I going to get the result based on the amount of money? And I think effort can also be like resources, time, money, whatever that might be. So. I think that's the hard part is it, because with everything being so uncertain right now, you know, like... Mm -hmm investing in Pinterest, investing in social media, you know what I mean? Those things just feel so like you're just throwing the money out there and hoping that maybe it'll work. And so I was kind of thinking more in systems and things like that, that maybe will free up time for me to then decide mm -hmm. about Pinterest and well, Pinterest I'm doing myself, but social media and things like that. So yeah. Um, it is a little scary. And like Lori, she's kind of asking the same thing you are. Lori Ven Vanelli, not Lori Murphy. She's oh, yeah. also asking the same thing. She said, how did you decide when it's time to add a team member, even a part-time contractor? Do you have specific decision criteria that you use for taking that step? And so, which is kind of what you're asking Lori as well. Mm -hmm. I think there's twofold to that on my, so you guys know, I, uh, many, many of you, not all of you started a holiday blog recently and it, it's not making money. Like it's, I'm, I'm back at square one and I know how that is. It's very scary. Um, but I decided that I was going to invest in, in a specific, um, resource that was going to be helping. And it's, I think it's about $400 a month and that's scary when it's not. So the other blog is floating this one for a second of like, okay, we're going to invest in this thing for this one because we can see the ROI there. And it may or may not work. I'll let you guys know in six months. <laughs> it may or may not work. But I'm willing to take that risk. But again, I have this to help this. Um, and then as far as Tastemaker, we, when we decide to bring someone else on, it's a scary decision, especially as a business owner, when you are now responsible for someone's income and their yeah. life and their family and what they're depending on. And Abby and I have had deep and long conversations about where we do that and how and what that looks like. And I will say that we, we trust each other and we trust our gut and it's thus far been a great investment. And, and we've seen that with our team members, they've helped Tastemaker grow without them. We wouldn't have, if we would have just stayed Chandis and Abby, it wouldn't be where it is today. Not at all. Or Chandis, yeah. Abby, honestly, we've had, we pulled different mm -hmm. people who have different strengths. Yeah. And you just have to realize like 
what you don't have the capability of doing. Like, you know, I know that my business needs this, but I don't have enough bandwidth or knowledge. I don't have the willingness, capacity, or ability to do it. I know that those are non-negotiables because I know these things are gonna, gonna put it in that direction. But it also, you know, requires like, you have to know where you're going and what you need, first of all. And I think sometimes maybe that might be where you're at. You're like, I'm not even sure. I don't even know right. where I'm going or what I need. And that can be challenging. Um, but this is good information because these are the type of topics that we're wanting to talk more about on here in a more deep dive fashion of like, hey, what does that look like? What does an impact versus effort chart look like? And how do we take these questions and then workshop them and move through them so that you can make it informed? strategic business decision. Well, and I, th I think you hit the nail on the head though, is the higher up conversation of what do I want this to be five years from mm -hmm. now? What do I want it to look like? What are my skill sets? And I think, you know, we all started out probably for different reasons, but we put recipes up on a website, you know what I mean? But it, that's, it's so much more than that. And I think um, that's the scary part. You don't know what it, there's so many avenues to, and it's easy well, to get shiny object, you know, yeah. different than someone else's. And that's important to remember is I had someone just say recently, I'm okay with making about 225 a year is what I would like my goal. And I don't need to go above that. I'm perfectly fine with that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's really great that you know exactly where you want to be and you're okay with that. Then you also know how much you're willing to invest. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and Lori Vanelli to answer specifically, I think that impact versus effort chart, which we can share with you was super helpful for us in making those decisions because always if it's a high effort and like it's a high effort or a low effort and high impact, that's the things you want to first hire out. The things that are going to bring you the most ROI um, and that you can't do. If it's something that you hate and that will bring you a big ROI, that would be a really good one to hire out first because you, you can't do it or you don't like to do it, but it's going to bring you the biggest return on investment. Thank you, girls. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Okay, well, we have we have run out of time, unfortunately. I feel like we could just talk forever and ever. But this isn't goodbye because we're going to be here again on May 22nd. So Pacemaker Talk will take place every other Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and also, I just want to say... Uh, Thank you for being here. Thanks for tuning in live to our first Tastemaker Talk episode. And if you are meeting, you know, business besties and wanting to meet people, obviously we created this Tastemaker community for that. So you know about this, this Tastemaker Talk because you're already a member of our collaborative, which is our free membership site. Our goal this year is to really grow that as a space and a resource that our food food creator besties and, and our, our like-minded individuals in this community use. Um, as a resource and really generating conversations in there. So make sure that you're, you're making good use of that. And then also, if you're not already coming to our 2025 conference, it'll be in Las Vegas. Uh, we have, we're building out every year mentorship opportunities and ways to network and really have these conversations about, you know, driving your business forward, because we have also grown with this community and very much being in this area of intermediate to advanced professionals where we're all running businesses together and these are the going in. So Daphne is dropping the link in the comments here, but we have everything linked out and we'll we will send a post show notes in the replays of this to you. And it will also be live in the collaborative. Uh, but we also, Chandice, if you want to tell them about our guests for the 22nd, May 22nd, we are so excited. So every other week, you'll get to hear from Abby and I, and we'll be talking about different things. And then, so each other, the every other week will be a guest and we'll be bringing a speaker from our community or a guest and they will be talking about different things. So we're so excited. You're going to hear from incredible people all year long. And on May 22nd, we're going to be talking about just, um, SEO and recent trends, which I think is top priority for everyone right now with Arson of Top Hat Rank and Andrew of Nerd Press. These are two of our dearest friends. They're basically tastemaker family. We love them and we're so excited to chat with them. So we hope to see you on the 22nd talking about SEO and recent trends. Ugh. Daunting and scary, but a, a fun conversation where we can all commiserate as well. So. 
Well, thank, thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> thank you. you I just cut you off, Candice. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Thank you. No, thank you for everybody. We're glad that you're here. All right. See you next time. Bye, Bye. everyone.